there are two ways to deploy Jamf data capping to user devices. The first route is called user initiated enrollment, where administrators provide users with an enrollment URL or QR code, which directs users to install the Jamf Trust app and approve app permissions. The second and most common means of deployment is called managed deployment. This is where organizations leverage a unified endpoint management or UEM solution, such as Jamf Pro. UEMs allow organizations to automatically install the Jamf Trust app along with its required settings, avoiding the need of much user interaction. Deploying Jamf Trust to Apple supervised and Android enterprise devices via UEM has the additional benefit of making the app non-removable on device, preventing the users from being able to circumvent Jamf data capping. This video explores doing a managed deployment of Jamf data capping using Jamf Pro as our example UEM. However, Jamf data capping supports all of these UEMs too. For organizations with unmanaged devices, or those that choose to deploy Jamf data capping with Oda UEM, our next video in our Get Started with Jamf data capping series, User Initiate Enrollment of Jamf data capping, will walk you through how to deploy Jamf data capping by partnering with your users. Feel free to skip this video and move on if your organization plans on using user initiated enrollment instead of a managed deployment. Hello again! Welcome to UEM Deployment of Jamf Data Capping with me, Brayden. In this video, we're going to walk through how you can deploy Jamf Data Capping by leveraging your UEM. I am going to be using Jamf Pro as our example UEM. However, many of the steps conducted within Jamf Pro can be transferred to another UEM. Come on! There are two different states that an Apple device can be in when deploying via an organization's UEM, supervised and unsupervised. When conducting a managed deployment of Jamf data capping, it is important to know the supervision status of your Apple device prior to deployment because the resources being deployed differ slightly based on supervision status. Apple supervised devices are typically organization owned and may have management configurations that allow organizations to have more direct control over a device. Unsupervised Apple devices are usually user-provided devices that a company has enrolled in their UEM to provide a basic level of management, such as enforcing a password policy. A UEM deployment of Jamf data capping has five steps. Creating an activation profile, assigning or creating a device group, syncing radar to your organization's UEM, deploying a configuration profile, and pushing the Jamf Trust app to your user devices. Activation profiles are used to enroll devices into Jamf data capping. Activation profiles generate the configuration profile and managed app configuration XML essential for a UEM deployment. While creating activation profiles, administrators can also create device groups. Device groups are organizational buckets used to categorize like devices in Radar. All devices can either be placed in the default group, or we can create new specific device groups, which can be tied back to policies we create in video two, customized policies for Jamf data capping, for when different groups of users get access to different types of mobile data usage restrictions. For example, we may want to make device groups based on device type, department, or if the user provides the device. Device organization becomes handy when we block mobile data usage once a user's allowance is met under most job functions, but allow other specific device groups to only be notified when their usage limit is reached and not blocked entirely. Once our groups are created, we can sync Radar to our UEM. Radar can natively sync with many leading UEM solutions. Leveraging a feature in Radar called UEM Connect, administrators can map device groups to match their UEM's device groups. Mapping UEM device groups to Radar's device groups allows Radar to automatically assign devices to specific Jamf data capping policies based on their UEM group assignment. Additionally, device lifecycle management can be automated with UEM Connect. This means when a device is removed from the UEM, it can also be automatically deleted from Radar instead of having an administrator manually remove it. Once an activation profile is created and assigned to a device group, we can download the configuration profile for our devices. The configuration profile for iOS, iPadOS, and macOS devices enables and enforces settings required for the Jamf Trust app to run Jamf data capping successfully. Several steps typically requiring user interaction are permitted in the background by deploying a configuration profile. While the steps for deploying Jamf data capping are the same for both Apple supervised and unsupervised devices, there are different downloadable configuration profiles depending on the iOS device's supervision status. This is important to know when following along in Radar later in the video. 
The final step in deploying Jamf data capping is pushing the Jamf Trust app to user devices. Jamf Trust is the intermediary between the user's device and radar. It monitors network traffic on the device to know where a user is within their mobile data allowance and provides reporting back to radar. App installation happens automatically without user interaction by deploying Jamf Trust to an Apple supervised or Android enterprise device. When deploying to an unsupervised Apple device or regular Android device, the user is going to be prompted to install Jamf Trust. So communicate with your users when pushing the Jamf Trust app to their devices so they know to accept the app installation. When deploying Jamf Trust via UEM, as we are going to do shortly with Jamf Pro, there is a managed app configuration that we need to include as part of our deployment. The managed app configuration is a blocks of XML text generated when creating the activation profile. The managed app configuration sets the Jamf Trust app to know to which user the app is assigned and to which radar tenant to communicate with. Now that we have reviewed all five steps to a UEM deployment of Jamf data capping, let's walk through the process. To begin, Sign into Radar by visiting bt-radar.wondera.com. Once signed into Radar, the first task we are going to complete is creating an activation profile. Navigate to the left side menu and click Devices, Deployment, Activation Profiles. Once on the Activation Profile page, click Create Profile. The first step is to enter in a name to identify your activation profile easily. In this example, I am typing supervised iOS since I am deploying to an Apple supervised iPhone. Suppose you would like to deploy to a specific device group. In that case, you can select the group from the device group dropdown or start typing to create a new one. I am typing supervise so that all of the devices that enroll with this activation profile as part of this example will automatically be categorized as supervised devices. I also already have a device group within Jamf Pro labeled supervised. When we set up UEM Connect, we are going to map our Jamf Pro device group to our radar device group. Once the device group name is typed, click Create Option Supervise to formalize the group's creation. Click Next in the lower right corner. Jamf data capping is already selected under Capabilities. Click Next to proceed. For user identification, leave without identity provider selected because the user identification data is going to come from the UEM. It is important to note that users must be assigned to devices within your organization's UEM for radar to register the devices successfully during a UEM sync. Click Next. On this page, we need to select a method for Jamf Trust to determine user location because some policies, such as roaming, are triggered based on location data. Best effort is selected by default and works in most situations. This option has no user prompt but is not as accurate as if we select location services. Selecting location services does prompt the user for access to their location data. If users decline, Jamf Trust is going to resort back to best effort. Lastly, you can disable location services if your organization does not intend on configuring any roaming policies. For a UEM deployment, selecting best effort is going to be fine in most cases and is recommended to avoid users getting a location prompt. However, location services is an excellent choice if you can communicate effectively to your users to enable it for Jamf Trust. For this example, I'm going to leave best effort selected. Click next to be presented with a summary of your activation profile. Activation profiles cannot be changed once created, but you can create as many new ones as needed. When ready, click save and create, then click create profile. We now have our enrollment page. For this video, we are only focused on managed enrollment. If you are interested in a user initiate enrollment workflow, check out our next video, user initiate enrollment, of Jamf data capping. Click on the logo of your UEM. Since I am deploying to an Apple supervised iPhone, I am going to click iOS slash iPadOS supervised devices. You may notice a set of instructions already in Radar to help you with your deployment. If you are using a UEM other than Jamf Pro, these instructions may be helpful to you. Click this configuration profile, a .mobile config file is going to download to your computer. We are going to deploy this file using Jamf Pro in a moment. Next, click iOS slash iPadOS Managed App Configuration, Show App Configuration. Copy the App Configuration XML to your clipboard. We are going to also need this later in Jamf Pro when deploying the Jamf Trust app. When you are all finished, click Save. Do not worry if you forget something. You can revisit this page anytime by navigating to Devices, Deployment, Activation Profiles, and selecting this activation profile. Next. 
let us connect Jamf Pro and Radar using UEM Connect. Navigate over to the menu on the left. Click Integrations, UEM Connect. UEM Connect is a one-time setup. However, you may want to return to the UEM Connect page to map new device groups as you create them in your UEM. From the UEM Vendor dropdown, select your UEM. Configuration varies a small amount between UEMs, but most comprise a server URL, API username, and API password. Type in your UEM server URL, followed by your API username and your API password. If you are unfamiliar with API accounts for your UEM, partner with their support team or review their help desk documentation. Once a UEM's information has been entered, click Test and Save. Radar is going to verify the integration and prompt you once successful. Click Continue on the success prompt. Syncs happen every hour. However, you can click Sync Now in the top right corner to force a sync should the need arise. Scrolling down, we have Group Membership Mapping. Included is a default group mapping. Click Add. Select your UEM group from the dropdown. For this example, I am selecting the Mobile Supervised Group brought over from Jamf Pro. Next, select the Jamf Security Cloud group from the dropdown. This is the group you likely made earlier while creating an activation profile. Suppose you have more device groups in your UEM. Click Add and repeat these steps to map every device group you want to sync with Radar. Under User Data Field Mapping, we can remap any of the user data being synced over from our UEM. Moving further down, we have the UEM Device Sync Status. This is the setting to automate device lifecycle management. I am selecting Remove from Jamf Security Cloud. When Remove from Jamf Security Cloud is selected, devices will automatically be removed from Jamf Data Capping and deleted from Radar when they are removed from the UEM. When Keep Device in Jamf Security Cloud is selected, devices are going to remain in Radar even when removed from the UEM. Devices then have to be manually removed by administrators when needed. At the bottom of the page, there is the Sync Refresh Interval. Suppose you would like the UEM sync to happen less often than every hour. If so, you may change that setting here. When your changes have been made, scroll back to the top and click Save. Now it is time to get Jamf Data Capping deployed by signing into your UEM. If you are not using Jamf Pro like I am, follow along anyways and see what steps are transferable to the UEM used by your organization. Within Jamf Pro, click Devices, Configuration Profiles, Upload, Choose File. Select the configuration profile you downloaded from Radar earlier. Click Upload, and click Upload again. If you would like, change the profile name, add a description, or select a category. Click Scope. From this page, select the device group to which we want to assign this configuration profile. Click Add Mobile Device Groups. Then, click Add to the right of the supervised device group. Click Save. Our next step is to deploy the Jamf Trust app. Navigate to the menu on the left. Click Mobile Device Apps, New, Next. Type Jamf Trust into the search bar and select your App Store country or region. Click Next. Click Add to the right of Jamf Trust. I recommend setting the distribution method to install automatically slash prompt users to install and unselect allow users to remove app. By unselecting allow users to remove app, we prevent users with Apple supervised devices from being able to delete the Jamf Trust app and circumventing Jamf data capping. Click Scope. Under Target Mobile Devices, I am selecting all mobile devices. This is going to deploy the Jamf Trust app to all of my organization's mobile devices. Click App Configuration. Paste in the Manage App Configuration XML we copied from Radar. Click Save. There we have it. Jamf Data Capping is now deployed to our user devices. Let's turn over to our iPhone to make sure everything is configured correctly. On our user device, Navigate to the Settings app. We should see VPN enabled. While Jamf Trust itself is not a VPN, it does leverage the VPN architecture built into iOS and Android to create a robust and secure data monitoring solution. Scrolling down, tap General. 
scroll down again, and tap VPN and Device Management, MDM Profiles, More Details. If you see the VPN settings for Jamf Trust and the Jamf Security Root Certificate, you know that the Jamf Trust configuration profile got pushed to the device successfully. Suppose you do not see these objects. In that case, go back to your UEM and verify that you have selected the device group to which your test device is assigned. Otherwise, reach out to Jamf Support for assistance. Return to the home screen. See if the Jamf Trust app has been installed on your home screen, or swipe left to right to pull up App Library. Jamf Trust will likely appear in the recently added group in the top right corner. Alternatively, search for Jamf Trust by tapping on the search bar and typing Jamf Trust. If you do not see Jamf Trust in the list results, make another attempt to push Jamf Trust to your test device. Tap Jamf Trust to launch it. The first thing users are going to be prompted for is push notifications, unless location services were selected while creating the activation profile. Tap Allow Notifications Allow. Jamf Trust is going to load with a British Telecom Purple and show device and network protected with a large white check mark. Tap the arrow in the lower quarter of the screen. There we have data policy and usage. Data policy shows the mobile plan details configured in our second video, Customize Policies for Jamf Data Capping. Users can quickly see their remaining mobile data, when their plan resets, and whether they are on a domestic network or roaming. Usage shows the amount of data used during this period. Tapping on either tile is going to bring the user to a graphical reporting page. Great job enrolling your users into Jamf Data Capping via Manage Deployment. To learn more or get trial access to Jamf Pro, contact your Jamf account manager. In the video description, we have included a link to the Jamf security documentation covering deployment with all of the UEM supported by Jamf Data Capping and Jamf Pro's product page. Make sure to check those out. In our next video, we are going to deploy Jamf Data Capping through user-initiated enrollment. Feel free to jump to video five, Notifications for Jamf Data Capping, where we are going to set up Radar's powerful notification features for administrators and users if user-initiated enrollment is not going to be leveraged in your organization. I look forward to seeing you in another video.